good that you're here. Today, guys, we are talking about how to reach millennials. So, uh, C3 Toronto, uh, best church on the planet, part of the best movement on the planet. Come yeah. on. Woo! Canada. Uh, we, we have a church that's filled uh, with young people be between probably 18 and 35. So, that would be the millennial age group. And they're with about, I don't know, 1,500 people in our church. So we have like a lot of people in that age group. And that means, unfortunately, we don't have some people in other age groups. So we don't have uh, very many teenagers underneath 18. Our children's ministry wouldn't be your typical size children's ministry. And I think that's because a lot of the people in our church aren't having kids yet. And I would say one of the reflections of, of one of the ideas of why there's a lot of millennials in C3 Toronto is because we're a downtown urban church and mm -hmm. a lot of people are starting their careers off moving in from the suburbs. Right. So the church does reflect the city. So there's a couple of like uh, caveats when it comes to talking about reaching millennials. There's a few things that we've learned along the way. Mm -hmm. I would say one of the biggest things about reaching millennials is we reach who we are. Right. We reach who we are. That would be like probably a great thing. No matter who you, we're trying to reach, by default, I've heard it said that you reach either around five years. It's easy to reach as a preacher, as a pastor, as a church planner, as a leader to reach people and appeal to people five years under your age up to five years above your age. That bracket. Because when you're preaching, telling stories, illustrations and stuff like that, uh, they're going to be from your seasons of life, your seasons of experience. Right. So for me, having a five-year-old son mm -hmm. and a two-year-old daughter telling stories about kids, so families with young kids, so our, our nursery age group is one of the larger age groups in our kids' ministry. Mm -hmm. So you just naturally reach who you are. Yeah. Right. And in that, I think um, that we can put too much credit to trying to reach millennials and maybe in like a teaching like this, that we think, okay, we've got to do social media right, we've got to do like the web right, we've got to do, like our website has to look a certain way in order to reach social, in order to reach millennials. And we look at these like online mediums and, and it can be paralyzing for maybe a smaller church or a church that is led by an older demographic or something. And so I actually don't know if that is the right way or would be a main thing to reach millennials. Um, I think just being yourself is like super key. And even when it comes to marketing and like, and billboards, um, because we've done that too, we did a billboard and people could say, well, the reason a lot of people come to C3 Toronto is because we did billboards and marketing and all that. And we can market for sure, but I don't know if you could market to, a, to an age demographic uh, just in and of itself and reach those people and then that's it, that's said and done. I mean. The reason the billboard happened was because we felt that there was a strong word from God and we were obedient to that. Yeah. And before we even started our church, Pastor Phil Pringle, the leader of this movement, said, uh, referring to uh, the miracle with the water and wine, where Mary, the mother of Jesus, says to the disciples, and this is a key thing for anybody's life, no matter who you're trying to reach, she says this, she says, do what he tells you to do. And Pastor Phil said that to us, Sam, all you need to do is do what the Father tells you to do. Like, do what God tells you to do. And I believe that as we're obedient, whether it is in web, social, billboards, or anything, that we reach who God wants us to reach. And I think that's super key. And it's freeing to just be ourselves. Right, yeah. And so, and I think the best thing about being yourself is that actually speaks into a young person's mindset because a, a young person, I believe uh, our generation doesn't like fake. Yeah. So if you're not authentic, if you're not yourself, straight away trying to reach millennials could even set you to a pace that repels them even by trying. Yeah. Correct. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's kind of like just going after what God's asking you to do and being yourself is actually very attractive. So I think millennials or young people are attracted to an authentic 60-year-old person just being yeah. 60 yeah. and doing that well yeah. more than trying to do something just in order to re reach a demographic. Yeah. Right. Cool? Right. right. So it starts with being yourself. But also, 
we can reach and inspire and attract different demographics or different types of people by what we celebrate. Yeah. So we do it by being ourselves, but we do it by what we celebrate. So what we're promoting. So there's that story with the spotted and speckled sheep uh, where Jacob um, was trying to uh, build wealth and, and, and build up uh, his flock. Uh, and there was a story of Jacob and Laban. And so put up these poplar poles and strip them and, and whatever was put in front of the sheep, as the sheep were feeding and coming to that vision, they became what they saw in, in front of them. And this is a good leadership thought, is that whatever you put up, whatever you promote, whatever you celebrate, whatever you put up in front, you end up getting more of. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I tell you your outfit looks amazing, um, you might probably wear that outfit a few more times than what you would if I didn't, just because I celebrated it, just because yeah. I promoted it. And in our church, again, this is a reflection of our city because our city is very multicultural, but in our church, we have a lot of demographics on stage. Like if you look at our stage and what is on the stage, you will see it reflected in the congregation. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there's all different demographics and all different um, cultures and ethnicities ethnicities and that's not just because that's what's in our city because not all churches in our city are multicultural right. but our church is because we just see what's in the city we promote good culture we promote good attitude and, yeah. and good things from people's lives just from anybody yeah. put it up on stage and then people are feeling relatable yeah. right. Right. so whatever you celebrate mm -hmm. now see the the issue there's a there's a there's a negative to negative kind of combat when it comes to the younger generation and the older generation. So it's the entitlement of the younger generation fighting the pride of the older generation. Mm -hmm. And so the pride says you need to learn a lesson, you're entitled. And the entitlement says you never give me a shot mm -hmm. um, wow. because you just hold the authority position, you hold the power seat. Right. And this right. is a tension that goes on. If And so there... No one's wrong and no one's right, I, I believe. And so I think that if we can somehow learn to use the power seat instead of enforcing entitlement, but using it as an empowerment position, we will create an attractive culture that empowers more of the culture that we want. I'm not saying that you take a young person and you empower something you're not looking for more of, but if you see or smell or scent like the smallest thing that, that is a part of the future that you want more of, I believe that what you and I should do is we should promote it, mm -hmm. that we should yeah, celebrate right. it and put it up. And so in the first year of our church, I was preaching a lot of Sundays and I was talking to a peer and they said, how many, how many Sundays do you plan on preaching? And I thought I was planning on preaching most of the Sundays in that first year. And they said, why? And I was like, well, well uh, I want to speak vision and I want to speak culture. And I think I'm, I think I could do it the best. Then, like I started the church, like I'm the one that's going to do this. And they and they said to me kindly, they said that that was limited thinking. Um, and I was like, oh, why? And they're like, well, what's better is to find someone who has the vision and the culture that you want to talk about, that you want to preach about, instead of just preaching about it. Allow them to preach. Allow, give them mic time. You're promoting that young person, but you're also promoting what you would have been preaching about. And instead of having to preach about it, other people are seeing that person celebrated. Right. Yeah. So they will feel empowered and yeah. they will also embody the yeah. culture that you yeah. wanted to preach about yeah. in the first yeah. place. Yeah. So right. it's about like five good things yeah. where if you keep the power seat, mm -hmm. you stop all of that good stuff happening. And I think a really cool thing to see and that one thing that I've experienced in my life is when somebody in another generation risked on me. Right. Like so, cause we started the church when I was 27 and to even have Pastor Phil Pringle, the leader of the movement, like let me start a church. I mean, that just shows you how empowering our movement is for the younger generation. But then Pastor Lorne Tebbett from C3 in Calgary and the leader of Canada, um, you know, at one point wanted to plant a church in Saskatoon and basically just took his hands off the reins of that and just said, hey, Sam, like you go for it. You have to go. And the amount of empowerment and, and the willingness to risk is huge because when you see, 
when you see uh, a young person come in or, and I look like this, I look like someone who feels like they deserve position, someone who feels like that they're hungry for change and feels, feels more, in, more entitled, and I, I think entitled is a millennial swear word, but like feel more like, like deserving of maybe what my character has set me up for. But the good thing is if, if we can risk a little and know that someone has risked on us, and that gave us room for failure. The gift of failure is sometimes the best gift a leader can ever give us. Mm-hmm. To, to allow us to exercise courage and fail and learn that lesson is a beautiful thing. And I think that's yeah. happened for me. And I think I need to continue to remember to pass that on. Mm-hmm. So, we, so we reach millennials by reaching who we are. Right. Um, and we reach millennials by celebrating what we want more of Cele- celebrating millennials instead of instead of putting young people down saying they need to sit they need to sit on the shelf they they deserve a good whooping and they're because they're entitled <laughs> or something and i know cuz there there are bridges there are bridges and barriers when it comes to appealing to the heart and the nature of a millennial and you can see it negatively and positively i mean uh A lot of young people do idolize individualism, like want to stand out and be myself. And that can be seen as a negative. A lot of young people um, uh, are susceptible to quick ideas, new ideas, fast change. And and, uh, a lot of, and that can be seen as unpredictable, but could also be a real positive thing to birth new things and get new ideas going. And, And if we're not secure, in how we're releasing that, then we could we could be presenting a message that no, if you come in looking like that, that's a barrier against who you are and what our culture is. Mm-hmm. But we can see it as a bridge in order to guide it rather than stifle it. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And so they can be seen as self-absorbed. They can be seen as relationally awkward because that age group, like a millennial uh, or even a Generation Z has grown up behind social media and building relationships virtually. Mm-hmm. And when you do that, sometimes you don't even know how to have a real face-to-face conversation, or especially when conflict arises. And a lot of leadership and a lot of church leadership is face-to-face, yeah. and there's a lot of like relational conflict. So that's challenging. But as a leader, we could guide it, create bridges, or we could say, no, 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 they need to learn a lesson and create barriers. So we need to create bridges. So some of the good things that can happen... In, in using millennials or, or like setting young people free, which will in, in fact reach more millennials, some of the good things that we can do is empower new ideas. So we can encourage new ideas, we can embrace new ideas. So collaboratives work really well. For me, last Easter, I didn't come up with that idea and it was the best Easter we've ever had. So there was a collaboration of young creative minds and we risked and went for it and it was let's do like a deposition like a documentary style deposition on the death and disappearance of the body of Jesus all set in modern times and if you were there at our church over Easter you would have uh, understood that it was uh, one of the it was the best Easter experience that I've ever been in, especially in our church, and it was amazing. And that happened not from my brain, not from my creativity, not from my mind, but from allowing someone who is coming up with brilliant ideas that are better than mine and embracing it and releasing it, and and it's awesome. And a millennial, a, a young person, will be fast to adapt to new things, and that can be seen as a strength too. The negative to that is long-term vision and stick to itiveness to like yeah. keep sticking yeah. to the same pattern that comes that's hard when it comes to things like faithfulness and long-term giving mm-hmm. and uh, vision builders if, if the vision for vision builders giving uh, is a short-term thing sometimes young people grip that really quickly but then to stay faithful in that sometimes it's difficult but uh, whatever so uh, also authenticity and transparency is super key I think transparency is super key in church leadership today because now that we have tech and devices and we see global news all the time we see a lot of negative stuff happening with a lot of like nobody really tells the story of the leader who's faithful that really looks after people 
but the news will always grip stories of leaders that mess up. So what this does is it creates in young people cynicism when it comes to authority. So they're, so they're cynical in how to trust because thinking that if I submit to authority, it's actually going to grind against my spirit of individuality. Right. So like, because if I become under this authority, this, this authority, A, I don't know if I can trust this person because eventually they're going to hurt me. And B, if I do submit to this authority, does that mean I lose who I am? And, and a young person doesn't want it. So there's, there's strategy around this to guide it and not necessarily preach against it, but navigate it, I think is really good. So we talk about what the Bible wants is unity. And this is in Ephesians 4 or you know, Corinthians 12 or whatever, unity, but not uniformity. Right. So we don't want you to lose who you are, but we want you to align. And so the principle that I felt God speak to me a lot about was the body of Christ is more important than the community of Christ or the community of church because community is a buzzword when it comes to young people. Mm -hmm. um, but community isn't necessarily aligned where a body is community, but it's community aligned right. for vision and function. And that's what the church is. The church isn't just community. Community is a great word, but it's not necessarily aligned we need to get somewhere we're going somewhere and that's super uh super important good. so authenticity is important too but i don't believe there's a way of preaching authenticity that i think is important so authenticity when it comes to let's be authentic to however we feel and if we're having a bad day then we're going to be a bad person that's not authenticity right. mm -hmm. that's just being swayed by how we feel mm -hmm. yeah. that's called feelings it's immature so, but rather than preach against that, we just preach about what we can be authentic to. We can be authentic to God, uh, to His truth, mm -hmm. and to who He calls us to be in the character of the Holy Spirit. So as we're authentic to that, we actually become who Jesus wants us to become. So it's just yeah. guiding it. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You, we will reach, you and I will reach more young people and more millennials in this age group, instead of talking about the characteristics they, they have as bad or that we have as bad, mm -hmm. but celebrating it and rewording it, yeah. guiding yeah. it. Yeah. So, so um, we feel celebrated in what we do. And the last thing, and probably one of the most important things that I just want to say, when it comes to attracting millennials, reaching millennials, and generating like a great... Uh, youthfulness in church is um, every young person now I believe there's a wave of it in generation Y and generation Z to make a difference mm -hmm. I believe every young person on the planet wants to matter mm -hmm. and wants to make sure and what they do and what they put their hand to has meaning so this is in church it's important that we join the dots so why setting up drape setting up a, a chair while doing sound and joining the dots to powerful stories. So I, I think if we can try and even, you don't necessarily have to do video stories, but the, to just verbally tell a lot of life change stories of meaning. Wow, this is powerful. So even like setting up flags at C3 Toronto is kind of boring and meaningless. So for a young person, for a millennial, why do we have to do this? This isn't authentic. This isn't real. It's marketing and it's, and it's rude and it's like whatever. But if we say, listen, there's a girl in our church, and this is a true story. There's a girl in our church, on our team, on our media team actually, and she's been in our church for a couple of years, probably one of the greatest team members that we have at C3 Toronto. She is faithful. She thrives, everybody loves her, and she's one of our most celebrated, amazing people. She had an incredible encounter with God when she first came into church. Really, honestly, the first preach that she heard, she felt that God specifically, one of those preachers where God like literally checks your list, like on a preach, like every question answered. And you know how she came into church, team? Because she saw the flags. Right. Wow. So now go out, set out those flags and think about that. Yeah. You know what I mean? That yeah. is joining the dots yeah. and yeah. that creates yeah. meaning. So, yeah. And those stories will generate amazing life. And I believe that uh, the youthfulness and, and, and it will attract millennials in our congregations. Yeah. Right. Yeah.
Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Okay.